I'm Nick with Maple Power Systems. Here I'm stepping inside the cabin of a Schaefer V33. So this boat has the Maple 12 volt air conditioning system as well as the generator replacement solution. So this is um, including the 2000 watt inverter charger to be able to give the customer one 10 volts while he's disconnected from, while they're disconnected from shore power. Um, so this is gonna be the change on the, on the inverter option. Otherwise you would have, you would still have this screen here. You would still have the, uh, the display for the AC unit. So the AC unit in this boat is a 7,000 BTU DC. The 7,000 BTU unit is located right behind this panel over here. So if I could put some light into that for you. So right behind this panel, we have one, two, three, four screws. So these little caps come off. We have the screws behind them and the unit is located directly behind that, that panel over there with the single vent over here in the cabin, blowing into the cabin. The unit has a uh, dedicated lithium bank. So this boat in particular, since we do have the inverter as well, gets an extra 250 amp hour lithium battery. So for a total of two batteries rather than a singular, so it has a 500 amp hour lithium bank. Looking over here. Um, oh. Here that I am connected to shore power now, so what I'm going to do is reduce this because I know we're hooked up to a 20 to a 15 amp outlet. So I'm just going to change this to about 13 amps so that the existing charger as well can keep up. So now you can see we're putting 100 amps into the battery. We're 70. Point seven amps total going in with the AC unit running. We've used a total of 115 amp hours and this is gonna, that negative number is gonna keep going down since we are charging the battery now. Battery is 78.9. My time remaining, so with this H next to it, this time remaining is infinite. INF is infinite. When I disconnect shore power, it's then gonna show um, what that is. Um, if I have a negative draw. So it'll give you a, a range of hours, how much time you have left. So it's um, kind of like in cars, you're used to seeing how many miles you have left until empty. Same concept, but just for the, uh, for the battery system. How many hours you have left with the AC running or your current consumer running off of the, uh, off of the inverter charger. That's going through, so not everything. Let's talk about the, the display for the unit now. So display for the unit, this unit and all of our marine units are reverse cycle. So cooling and heating. Right now we're obviously in cool mode. We're in Florida. We have the fan set to auto. We have temperature up, temperature down, set temperature. So as I reduce my set temperature, it will um, have the compressor running longer. As I get closer to my set temperature, I set this for 76, let's say. We'll see that number increase. The blower's gonna slow down. The compressor's also gonna slow down. So we are going to greatly reduce the amount of unit draw. See here, it looks like shore power is just disconnected. Units running, we're drawing 25 amps. As we talked about last time, we can see that hour being figured out. What I'm gonna do here is readjust my shore power a little bit lower. Let's see how low I can really make it to 10 amps because I believe that the detailers are also using that same outlet. Going back to this, so we're looking here, I see that my compressor is on. 
I can see that my pump is also on. My return temperature 77, that's the temperature we're seeing over there. That evaporator temperature, so I can see the temperature of a sensor in the evaporator itself. So that's that's the temperature the evaporator's at. So we have about a 22 degree difference in there. So the air's gonna be coming out about ballpark five degrees, um, five degrees warmer. Then we have our condenser temp, so the condenser temp at 92. That's gonna be a big a big judge if we have to do a descale in the system, if we have to clean a strainer, if we have restricted water flow. Um, so this condenser temp at 92 is perfect. Um, this over here is gonna show the voltage coming into the unit, temperature format. Then we have our alarms. If there is an alarm on the system, this will be flashing. You just push on the alarm. It'll tell you here what that alarm is. Error eight, error 10. That's gonna be relevant with, uh, it's gonna go hand in hand with that water flow that we just talked about on the condenser temperature. Um, error five is a lack of refrigerant. That's gonna be something that uh, will more times than not need to be dealt with by, uh, by us or by one of our representatives. And there's a few other errors in there, but next to the error that happens, it's gonna it's gonna detail what that is. And it's also available in our uh, in our manual, which is available on our website. Uh, this Victron monitor is also Bluetooth. It's not Wi-Fi, so this is gonna be something that you can view from different areas of the vessel, but not something that can be seen. Oh, and we're back at infinite because now shore power is reconnected again. I've limited this now to 10 amps, so it's only putting 70 amps back in, but it's still charging positively. It's putting me 44 amps back into the batteries. So then back here in this bilge space is where we have our pump set up. So we have our through hole over here, bonding for the through hole, going to the strainer. So this strainer, we just want to make sure it's nice and clean. So we have to periodically check it. We have our seawater pump over here, our 12 volt pump connected to the unit. This is going to be our bleeding valve. So if the boat's on a lift periodically or maybe when the strainer's cleaned, air can be introduced into the system. So if you hear the pump running but don't have any water coming out of the side, very likely what's happened is we do not have, we have, a, an, we have an airlock in the system. So it's a matter of coming here, twisting this, this blue knob. Some air will burp out. You'll have a mix of air and water. Then finally it'll be the steady stream of water. That steady stream of water means that there should be no more air in the pump and turn the system back on and it should start working normally. Just to facilitate the process for the, uh, for the end user. Over on this back wall. This is our DC-DC charger. So this is connected to the, uh, to the house battery that's connected to both engines. Um, when that battery is being charged, it's gonna take available power and it's gonna charge the lithium bank at a lithium charge rate. We have a fuse for it here. We have a fuse here. This is for the inverter charger. So there's the battery switch. There's the inverter charger. So we're using the master volt power combi. Over here we have our shunts. So this is where we were looking at that Victron screen inside with the fuses for the two voltage readings. Over here is the breaker and disconnect for the air conditioner. So this little yellow stick pushed in is the on is the is on position for the unit. If you push this red button, this little yellow stick comes down, and that would be the off position. The display inside would be off. If there is a situation the unit draws more power than it's supposed to, um, or if you're inside and you notice that there's no power on the display, very likely what's happening is that this either someone came down here and pushed this button accidentally, or there was some situation that the Enbridge went up higher than it was supposed to and tripped this breaker. So just reset it, just make sure we have good water flow, make sure that everything is running as it should, and um, should be a fairly simplistic fix. We also have this fuse on the negative side of the DC-DC charger, and this is a 20 amp, um, or I'm sorry, a 30 amp mega fuse. Maxi, I'm sorry, Maxi Fuse. Typically shouldn't have any issues, but if you're noticing you're not getting any, you're not getting any charge, it's this fuse to check and this fuse to check if you're not getting any charge from the engine alternators.
Another aspect with this inverter charger, this inverter charger is what's charging the unit from shore power. If we do come across a situation, you hear beeping, you notice that all the displays are dead, there's no power. Um, it could be that this is faulted out. Um, so when you turn on, you hear the beeping, there will be a fault on display. So it's looking at the display, finding out what that fault is. If it's a low voltage, which is um, going to be one of the more common that I've heard about, um, what you're going to want to do is connect to shore power, leave it connected for, for, um, for about uh, 20, 30 minutes, and this will eventually wake up the batteries, the lithium batteries. Once the batteries are awake, we can then reset this, which is as simple as disconnecting shore power, turning off the inverter from the display, then turning it back on, and that will clear that fault out. Or um, the quickest way is going to be to start the engines, fast idle about uh, 800, 900 RPMs. That will wake up the batteries quite a bit faster. You can do that disconnected from shore power. Once again, once you see a voltage reading inside, you can then turn the inverter back on and reconnect shore power and the charger will kick in, the inverter the inverter charger will kick in and start charging the, uh, the lithium bank. The lithium bank is located in the aft compartment over here. As we had said, it's two 250 amp hour lithium batteries, so a total of 500 amp hours. And that's to give us eight hours of running with the air conditioner, with some use of the Kenyan grill um, that's mounted in the, uh, in the cockpit of this vessel. So over here is the Kenyan grill that's running either directly offshore power or running through the inverter when it's disconnected from shore power. Another thing to look at is when you start the air conditioner, that there is the discharge of water. That's the discharge, that's the, the water circulating from that pump that we saw down below. And then we have another through hole right next to it that's not doing anything right now. That's the condensation. So we have a sump box. The condensation goes to that sump box. And once that sump box fills up, the water will shoot out of there, but it's only periodically. It's once, once the water hits a certain level, there's an internal float switch that will activate. But it is important to take a, a note of that water flow and to make sure that there is a good amount of water flow. If it's reduced, it could be a dirty strainer, um, it could be a partial clog on the on the inlet, um, or it could be time for a descale on the system. There could be some fouling in the, in the piping. Uh, if there's no water, that's going to be where we're going to want to look at that bleeding valve and make sure that we bleed out any air that's introduced into the system.